the Wilcox John Doe, also known as the Pima County John Doe, identified as Joseph Myers Sr. There was an accident on March 11, 1992, in Wilcox, Arizona. He was accidentally hit by a train. It doesn't appear that it was an intentional act, but was rather some sort of accident. This one is a little bit unusual because his fingerprints linked to his name, or at least the name that they believed was his. But no next of kin was located at all, and so they couldn't confirm it. And obviously sometimes when people are arrested, they try to give different names. It's harder to get away with it now because they can digitally check, but in 1992 that obviously wasn't the case. So for this reason, they weren't sure if this was even his real name. Thanks to Moxie Forensics, his identity was found, and we now know his name is, in fact, Joseph William Myers Sr., and he was from Texas. His family had no idea he was even in Arizona. It's possible that the 35-year-old man was trying to hop on a train, like many before him. They used to call it riding the rails. Maybe they still do, but it's a lot harder to get on the trains now. And even if they do, it's very dangerous. For a long time, they were able to get on and a lot of the cars weren't locked. But in many cases, if they are locked, they'll be stuck right in that spot trying to hang on. And of course, the train is going fast. And falling off the train has, of course, led to a number of John Doe's that I've covered. Joseph Myers Sr. went unidentified for 31 years. Had he lived, he would be 66 years old today. The Riverside County Jane Doe, identified as Juana Aroha Segal. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing, so my apologies to her family and actually to the viewer who suggested this case to me before, who's related to her. I'm so bad at it, I feel like I shouldn't even cover them, but I don't want to leave them out either. This case actually starts in Beaumont, California, which is in Riverside County. This is going to be handled as an update because I was actually contacted last year by a relative of this Jane Doe. This young woman, Cecilia, was contacted by the police involving this case, as they found her during a DNA search. So while she couldn't provide help in solving the case, she still felt responsible for trying. So I'm going to run the original case right now, it's only three minutes, and then I will give you the update. Unidentified Jane Doe the Riverside County, Jane Doe, 1996. I was contacted by a relative of the Riverside Jane Doe, 1996. Cecilia found herself being contacted by a person who was doing genetic DNA research for this specific case. It turns out she was related, but she didn't know who this woman was. While she didn't know of anyone in her family that was missing, her DNA still may help solve the puzzle. That's why it's so important to upload your DNA. The story starts on January 27, 1996, about 20 feet south of the eastbound 60 freeway. This was about a mile and a half east of Gilman Springs Road. The remains of a woman was found near some trash in a hilly area off Highway 60 near Beaumont, California. The woman was wearing a purple long-sleeved turtleneck shirt, blue pants, and a dark gray sweater. Her clothing was clean and well-maintained, so she likely wasn't homeless. The same goes for her dental care. She received dental care, and she was wearing quite a bit of jewelry, including a yellow metal wristwatch with a flower-shaped cover. It had multiple stones were on top, with a red one in the center. There was what was described as a yellow metal ring with a clear stone on her left ring finger, and what's described as a gold pendant in the shape of a rose. I'm certainly not an expert, but I once had a Black Hills gold ring in the shape of a rose, and it looked exactly like this, which makes me think this could be Black Hills gold. There was also a necklace with what is described as gold Jesus and Virgin Mary pendant. Homicide investigators responded to the scene 26 years ago, finding her just hours after she passed due to a GS wound to the head. She suffered extensive trauma and as a result, she wasn't visually identifiable. She was of Hispanic descent, and the two names that came up the most in her genetic DNA search was the surnames of Rivera and Duran, with Rivera being the one that came up the most. 
Her line of ancestors appear to have mainly originated in Durango, Mexico, eventually migrating to the United States, mostly within California. They believe the young woman was likely 30 to 45, which, if correct, would likely mean someone within the Rivera or Duran families are missing someone with a birth date ranging from about 1951 to 1966. She was around 5'1 and 130 pounds. They also noted that she'd had at least one child, as she had a cesarean scar. If anyone has any idea who she might be, please call the contact number on the screen or submit an anonymous tip. The tip link is given on the screen. The Riverside Jane Doe, 1996, has gone unidentified for 26 years. So I want to thank Cecilia again for doing all that she did to try to help get this solved and for the fact that this person mattered to her. Othram Labs provided the DNA and did the genetic genealogy investigation themselves. While they had to put the search on hold for more DNA uploads, Juana Aroja Zegal was just 41 when her life was brutally stolen from her in January of 1996. Not only is it horrible she was abused so badly, but it rendered her facial features impossible to compare to missing persons. She was a 41-year-old mother of four. We know that she was reported missing from the Los Angeles area, which is about 78 miles or 126 kilometers away from where she was found in Rosemont. She left behind four daughters who have been missing her for the last 27 years, wanting nothing more than knowing where their mother was. This was a particularly brutal and hateful crime. If anyone has any information, they really need someone to come forward. Her daughter would give this statement. He destroyed my family. He didn't kill only one person. He killed all of us. Saying that she really, really needs to know who did this. Juana Aroja Zegal went unidentified for 27 years. Had she lived the life she deserved, she would be 68 years old today. Huge thanks for watching all the way to the end, and a big thanks to all of you who consistently like and comment on the videos. Whether you leave a full comment or an emoji, it makes a huge difference. The whole dance with YouTube is hard sometimes. I gain only about 350 subs a month. So if you consistently watch my videos, maybe take a moment to subscribe. It's a huge push toward the videos being suggested to new people. The next goal is 20,000. Thanks everyone for watching. Take care of yourselves and each other.